so today we will be discussing the december 25 and 26th daily current affairs today we have six major topics to discuss which include ehrms the electronic human resource management system which was recently launched then the kasanur forest disease or the kfd which has been rapidly reported recently in the shimoga district of karnataka then ag600 the world's largest amphibious aircraft then reservoir computing systems which will be providing machines or which will be enabling machines to better think like humans then harissa festival which is now right now being conducted by the jammu and kashmir tourism development corporation then electric vehicles versus hydrogen vehicles there has been this huge debate that uh, hydrogen vehicles might be the future of green automobile industry and it will not be electric vehicles and we will be taking a look at that particular angle also let us start with uh, ehrms electronic human resource management system ehrms basically it is an online platform for central government employees to apply for leave and access all their service related information and other queries from a single online platform now this was recently launched by the ministry of personal public grievances and pensions on december 25th which is observed as the good governance day so this particular online platform was launched on that day then the aim of this ehrms system is basically to instill responsibility and accountability among all the government servants or the central government employees and employees the peculiarity of the scheme is that the employees themselves can update the data but this updation by the employees will be subject to verification by concerned authorities then the next topic is kasanur forest disease this kasanur forest disease is basically more popularly known as monkey fever or it is called by monkey fever by the local population in those affected areas by the kasanur forest disease this kasanur forest disease is basically a tick borne viral hemorrhagic fever endemic which can be seen in karnataka state in india then this kfd disease is caused by a virus called kfd virus or the kasanur forest disease virus which was identified way back in 1957 when an illness occurred in the monkeys especially in the black faced langur and the red faced bonnet monkeys so there has been massive deaths of these monkeys in the kasanur forest area which is located in the shimoga district in karnataka state so that is when this disease was identified in 1957 now recently why this was in news was due to the fact that recently in tirthahalli taluk which is again located on the shimoga district of karnataka there and it has been frequently reporting incidents of kasanur forest disease so there has been a lot of reports of this disease in the tirthahalli taluk there has been around five four positive cases including one death and now the key concern with respect to this kfd disease is that eco biological changes basically this eco biological changes due to deforestation and the use of new land for farming and cattle grazing etc could lead to spread of kfd virus to newer geo geographical areas and that could be a huge threat already there has been multiple reports or reportings of this kfd disease from many other parts of india including andaman nicobar islands so there is a huge chance that this disease could spread to new geographical areas then our next topic is the ag600 and the speciality of ag600 is that it is the world's largest amphibious aircraft and this was recently successfully launched by china so this is a domestically developed amphibious aircraft by china this is powered by you now the specifications of this aircraft is that it is powered by four turbo prop engines and the ag600 can carry around 50 people during maritime search and rescue missions now the development of this amphibious aircraft carrier which is the largest in the entire world by china should be seen in the backdrop of the recent rapid military modernization program of the chinese people's liberation army the pla has been building things like anti satellite missiles stealth fighters or the fifth generation fighters recently we have seen the chinese military developing j20 a very advanced fifth generation fighter jet or a stealth fighter jet then again they are right now making around 
a lot of indigenous aircraft carrier recently again they have designed uh, their first indigenous aircraft carrier and the chinese pla has a plan to make around uh, three to four new indigenously built aircraft carriers and they will be sending some of those aircraft carriers to the indian ocean region or they will be deploying these aircraft carriers on that particular region and this could be a massive security threat to india now what are amphibious aircrafts amphibious aircrafts are basically aircrafts which can take off and land on both the land and water and now they are they have a few disadvantages like they are comparatively slower and much more heavier but uh, the peculiarity of these aircrafts is that they are much more versatile than the usual land planes and when compared to the helicopters the major disadvantages of amphibious aircrafts are that they cannot hover in the same place and they cannot land vertically like uh, helicopters but uh, the advantage here lies in the fact that they have a longer range than helicopters now another very important uh, topic from the science and technology especially from the science and technologies regarding reservoir computing systems scientists recently developed something called a reservoir computer systems so scientists have recently developed a new type of neural network chip now the this neural network chip it can dramatically improve the efficiency of teaching machines to think more like humans so this will be again enhancing artificial intelligence and things like that and this particular neural network chip it has been called a reservoir computing system and this reservoir computer system it could even predict uh, the next words in the conversation basically this reservoir computer systems they will help us to predict future outcomes based on present scenarios that is why reservoir computing systems will be a game changer basically this was developed by researchers from the university of michigan in the united states and they another peculiarity is that they created this system using memristors now what are these memristors these memristors are a special type of resistive device that can both perform logic as well as store data so they are much more advanced than their current counterparts and a major advantage of using this memristors is that they require less space so they can be and also they can be easily integrated to current silicon based electronic systems then our next topic is with respect to harisa festival which is right now being conducted in jammu and kashmir by the jammu and kashmir tourism development corporation now the aim of this harisa festival is basically to give tourists as well as the local population in jammu and kashmir an idea about the local cuisine of jammu and kashmir basically the, during this festival harisa which is a winter cuisine of jammu and kashmir is being served with a traditional kashmiri bread and noon chai or what we call the salt pink tea so basically harisa festival is aimed at promoting the traditional kashmiri cuisine then uh, recently there has been discussions about the advantages of electric vehicles and comparisons of them with respect to hydrogen vehicles so now let's have a look at that issue basically recently what sparked this debate among automobile experts was a statement by the managing director of mercedes benz india mercedes benz india basically have urged the government not to rush with all electric vehicles push what they are saying is that hydrogen vehicles have much better prospects when compared to electric vehicles so there ha there has been this widespread debate among automobile experts that which will be the future of green automobile industry whether it is going to be electric vehicles or whether it is going to be hydrogen vehicles basically this entire discussion comes in the backdrop of the indian government last year announcing that the entire automobile industry will go electric by 2030 and this has created widespread panic among the automobile industry in the country and now we will have a look at what do we mean by electric vehicles and what is the difference of electric vehicles when compared to hydrogen vehicles basically see the main difference between conventional vehicles and electric vehicles is that conventional vehicles burn fuel in an internal combustion engine so there is that sort of a feature but if you take the case of electric vehicles they does not have an engine instead they are powered by a battery basically most of today's electric vehicles are working by using the lithium ion batteries which are again frequently used in mobile phones laptops etc basically the main difference between these hydrogen vehicles or fuel cell vehicles they are also called fuel cell vehicles when compared to this electric vehicles is that this hydrogen vehicles or fuel cell vehicles they are also driven by electric motor but instead of using batteries what they do is that they will be creating electricity in on board fuel cells 
so then they will work by using that electricity created in those fuel cells now in order to create this electricity within this fuel cell they will be using oxygen as well as stored hydrogen that is how this kind of a fuel cell vehicle or hydrogen vehicle works and many believes that uh, that makes it uh, rather superior when compared to electric vehicles but the problem is that it is very difficult to store hydrogen or extract hydrogen and it's often a very expensive process so these were the major topics from 25th and 26th daily current affairs now in order to get more idea about these topics you can download our materials which will be posted below this video